You can stop that phony chanting, my friend. I just blew up your plant, and all the little playmates are in custody. <laughs> say, uh, say, uh, who do you think you are, buddy? Breaking in here in the middle of a minion and stopping the service. <laughs> I'm James Blunt, secret agent 00695. Mark down a letter from seven. I'm the man from Tante, T-A-N-T-E. -E. That stands for to annihilate no good troublemakers, etc. And this is no rabbi, he's Heinrich von Pippig. <laughs> Former SS man. And up until a minute ago, he was the head from the ring of kosher label counterfeiters. <laughs> He works for Treif. That's T-R-A-F-E, which stands for Terrible, Rotten, and Filthy Enemies. The evilest organization in the world, and the one that Tante is sworn to destroy. So, you are the famous James Blunt. <laughs> Who would have thought? I mean, you're so tall and fair and freckled and, and so ruggedly handsome. Who would think that you could work for Tante? <laughs> Why, that's the point. I don't look it. <laughs> Hello, Miss Penny Candy. James, I didn't know you were back in London. Well, uh, M sent for me. Is she in? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'll buzz her. Go in, but be careful. She just washed the floor, so <laughs> try to step on the paper. Penny Candy, baby doll, if I'm going to stay in London for a couple days, we ought to get together over a bottle of seltzer. <laughs> could come of it. You know Mother would only approve of a doctor. Welcome back to Tante Headquarters. <laughs> well, it's very nice to be back, Em. Listen, sit down. Have a piece of fruit, something. Well, Em, I'd like to talk about my next assignment. Eat for his Dumbledore. <laughs> ah, the little sneak snake. Uh, I, I would, but I... I got some nice chopped liver. <laughs> some yesterday's chicken. Well, I... A little soup, a little fish, what? I'm really not hungry. I ate already on the plane. You ate on the plane? You call that eating? It's plain poison. <laughs> In such small portions. Please, Em, what about the new job? Don't open a big mouth to me, Jake. <laughs> Try to remember what M stands for. <laughs> All right, Mama. Please don't nag me. And it isn't Jake anymore, it's James. You may be James to the royal sonny boy, but to your mama, you will always be Jake. What do you think, it's easy for me? Running the organization? Trying to figure out the plans and the schemes and the menus? Trying to pay the bills and trying to save a little? Washing and cooking and boiling. <laughs> and do I do it for me? Who do I do it for? I do it for you. I know, Ma. All right, already, I know. Well, you should watch your mouth, that's all. <laughs> now, wait, here's the thing. As you know, the world B'nai Brit has just raised over $10 million in pledges on the recent fundraising drive. Yes, I know that. Naturally, Treif would give anything to get the names of the biggest pledges so that they could eliminate them before they're paying up the pledges. Why, that could mean total destruction. Yeah, or even voice. And Jake. James, James. Jake, Jake. <laughs> this is exactly what happened. You can't mean that... Yes, the paper with the list of names of the ten biggest donors was stolen from the New York chair lady. <laughs> it was while she was at a theater party. <laughs> she was standing up there singing Hello, Dolly. <laughs> and they grabbed her poise. How terrible. Sure. I mean, if you think about it, if only she could have got in to see Fiddler on the Roof, <laughs> then this would never have happened. But be that as it may, Treif has got the list of names. 
and they are about to distribute them to their agents around the world. You got to go by New York and find that list. <laughs> because the lives of ten generous pledges is depending on it. And also the future of Georgie Jessel. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't let you down. Well, see that you don't. Now, we'll go over to the weapons room and we'll give you the latest scientific inventions to help you in the work. Uh, will you give to me a gun this time? <laughs> How many times do I gotta tell you? No guns! It's a dangerous thing. Uh, you, you, could, you could hurt an eye, you could, uh, you could kill yourself or, or even voice. But all the agents from all the other groups, they have guns. Yeah, well, I don't care what they have. You let their mothers work. <laughs> you carry what I'll tell you to carry. But, Mama, I feel so silly. Can't get on the stick with a nail in it. Yeah, sure, 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 yeah, sure. You wait. You wait until you're in a tight spot. And then you'll have to use it, and you'll be glad you got it. So come on, we're going to the weapons room. Hello, 00695, Markdown 27. Good to see you, Dr. Weiss. It always amazes me how you come up with these gadgets. What have you got for me this time? I'm going to fill you up with goodies. <laughs> Here, yeah, you'll take a look on this car. Well, it's a beautiful new Thunderbird. Yeah, but look on this. On the dashboard, you see what? A shiny Star of David. <laughs> An eloquent touch. Aha. Uh -huh. But when you press this button, then what? Why, the star sinks into the dashboard and a plastic statue pops up into its place. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. This device, you see... It's going to help you when you're driving in restricted neighborhoods. <laughs> now, if you're being followed by another car, so you press this button. Brilliant. It releases a spritz, slippery chicken fat from the exhaust pipes. Now, wait, wait. It's just the beginning. You look on this button here. This releases a screen of fabulous cooking odors behind you. <laughs> now, the idea is anybody who's silly enough to follow you would inhale it, and it would so tantalize them by the pellets that they will be compelled to, to pull into the nearest drive-in and have a snack. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You have reached a jack of diamonds with a queen of spades. <laughs> I, uh, I don't understand uh, a jack of diamonds with a queen of spades. That's a pinnacle. You have reached a pinnacle. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait. If a man is sitting here in the seat next to you, holding a gun on you, so you'll press this button on the gear shift. I think I get it. That ejects him out from the top of the car. No, no, wait. It ejects you out from the car. <laughs> You see, you see, uh, <laughs> this leaves him sitting there alone. <laughs> and he feels ridiculous holding a gun on nobody. What a fabulous and lovely car. Sure. And it's all yours for only $8,500 less the trade. <laughs> you uh, sign here. I already looked up the credit and the financing is all arranged. Um, um, I don't see why I'm always paying for everything I use. Well, war is hell, Jacob. War is hell. <laughs> You'll go by New York and you'll stay at the athletic club. The athletic club? That's right. Why, how could one of us ever get to be a member there? You gotta make up false credentials. <laughs> That's the perfect place for you, Jake. Because Trafe would never look for you there. <laughs> then you'll go to 492 Second Avenue and you'll see a fellow Weinstein. This is your contact. You'll identify yourself to him with the passwords red and blue is brown. <laughs> now, goodbye and good luck. Thanks a lot, Em. <laughs> and I'll return with the papers. You can count on it. I hope so. And Jake. Yes? You wear the heavy sweater and the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and you button up the coat. All right, Mama, I know. I know already. Is uh, this the athletic club? Oh, uh, yes, of course. I'd like to become a member here. Mm-hmm. Your name? Terence Watling Wilkins Harris. <laughs> and uh, your uh, previous address? 39, uh, 39 <laughs> Churchill Court, London, W, England. Hmm. Education? Eton, Oxford, Sandhurst, the whole schmear. <laughs> and uh, any hobbies? Um, rugby, uh, cricket, <laughs> tennis, darts, polo. Fine. Any close personal friends, any uh, relatives, anyone at all for references? Uh, certainly. The uh, Duke and Duchess Windsor. Uh, Windsor. <laughs> Lord and Lady Snowden. Prince Philip and the Queen. And, uh, oh, yes, uh, the Beatles. Mm. <laughs> That's excellent. Now, just one more thing. Uh, <laughs> your uh, your uh, religion. Oh, don't worry, I'm a goy. <laughs> Who is it? Mr. Weinstein? Yes, wait, I'll open the door. What is it? Red and blue is brown. <laughs> Uh-huh, and one and one is two. <laughs> Mr. Weinstein, red and blue is brown. No, 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 give some different colors, then I'll change my numbers, and we got ourselves a game. No, no, think, Mr. Weinstein, red and blue is brown. Oh, wait a minute. I'm an old man, you know? It sounds like some kind of a password. Now you're beginning to get it. Yes, and password is a different game from numbers with colors. <laughs> Give to me again. I'm not playing games, Mr. Weinstein. I'm the Tante. <laughs> ah, shh. Come inside. Like they say, the holes have ears. <laughs> you mean the voles have ears? Holes, voles, whatever. I'm an old man. <laughs> Come in. Mister, I don't think it's me you want. It uh, must be my son, the spy. <laughs> is, uh, is his name also Mr. Weinstein? What could it be, Mrs. Shapiro? <laughs> don't be fresh with me, Sonny. I'm an old man. <laughs> All right, where is your son? My son is not at home. He's by the stage delicatessen. You're working on a case, no doubt. What kind of a case? When things get a little slow with his spying, he picks up a couple dollars waiting on tables. I see. My son is a good boy. Yes. And a good son. I'm sure. And a good spy. Look, I... Uh... And a good waiter. Look, when I'm getting to the delicatessen, how will I recognize him? You can't miss him. He's wearing an apron with a trench coat. <laughs> Excuse me, Vader. Your name is Weinstein, isn't it? Weinstein? You mean you, you didn't hear about it? About what? About Weinstein. He's dead. He, he blew up. He exploded. Bang, you know? Just like that, he was gone. I mean, it happened like ten minutes ago. Why, that's... That's terrible. Yeah, it was worse than that. It happened right here in the middle of the rush hour. <laughs> but what? What about Weinstein? How did he happen to explode? Oh, who knows? It happened so fast, you know. I, I was just talking to him, you know, not a minute before. He was, he was telling me about some customer left him a big fat dime that was ticking. <laughs> it must have been a bomb. Hey, buddy, any time they leave you a lousy dime, it's a bomb. <laughs> So they got poor Weinstein, those rotten trafe. Wow, blowing up a person just for eating a little trafe. You know, how orthodox can you get? Ah, uh, 
Charlie, you don't understand. What I don't understand is how you could think I was Weinstein. Well, you're wearing an apron and a trench coat. Hey, I always wear my coat, you know? I wouldn't leave it hanging up around here. That's a word to the wise, if you know what I mean. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, listen, sit down right over there. That table is taken, and there's a girl sitting down. She happens to be a terrific girl. Listen, her father's a very prominent furrier, you know? She's an only child. Listen, take a look at her. Look at that gorgeous, slow-eyed vixen. Huh? That hair? <laughs> that brand-new nose? Huh? <laughs> But you don't understand. I'm trying yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, I know all about it. You're James Blonde. Weinstein told me everything. <laughs> he told me about you. He told me about him. Uh, red and green is yellow. You know all that, Jeff. No, that's wrong. You're wrong. You Sit see... down. Have a celery sonic. <laughs> hey, uh, James Blonde, I want you to meet uh, Miss Sexy Litvak. Hello, Miss Litvak. You can call me Sexy. All right, Sexy, then. Oh, James, you're irresistible. That eyes, those nose, that lips, them hair. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? It's hard for me to say. Here, I'll spell it for you in my alphabet soup. Let me see. I, L U V, Y O O Z E. That's right. I love yous. I love yous. Mr. Blonde, I was a high school dropout. That's why you've got to help me. I've got to get the list of pledges and erase my father's name. And you've got to read me that list. You needn't worry. We're going to protect all the people on the list from Trafe. It isn't Trafe that I'm worried about. I have to get his name off. You see, he drank too much Concord grape wine at that fundraising affair. And he overpledged himself. Sexy, sexy, please, darling. Your tears, they're diluting my Dr. Brown celery tummy. <laughs> Do Dr. Brown, that reminds me. Doctor, doc that's it. Not Dr. Brown, Dr. New. Dr. New celery tonic? No, no, New. Surely you've heard of the mysterious Dr. New. No, no, who is he? Is he a doctor, a doctor, or a doctor, a dentist? <laughs> no, no. He's a defrocked veterinarian. <laughs> now, he runs a fortune cookie bakery on Fire Island. Uh, it's called uh, the Good Fairy Fortune Cookie Company. But how does he tie in with the missing list of pledges? One night in Chinatown, after dinner, I opened my fortune cookie and the strip of paper read, I pledge $500 anonymous. I think I'd better pay this Dr. New a visit. Brand? New? <laughs> Need I say gems? Need I say what? <laughs> so, you're the famous James Brand. So, you're the famous Dr. What's New. You come to buy a fortune cookie, no doubt. But uh, so sorry, Mr. Brand. We sell strictly wholesale. Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush with you, Doctor. I had a terrible time trying to get out here to Fire Island. <laughs> That boatman of yours attacked me. <laughs> Lucky I had by me mine stick with the nail in it. <laughs> on, uh, on the fire iron, uh, Mr. Brand, such attacks are not uncommon. <laughs> What's your game, Doctor? You don't fool me with this phony fortune cookie front. Game, Mr. Brand. I only pray at games I cannot lose. <laughs> For example, at this moment, you will notice my chopsticky, poised and ready. On the tip is just the right amount of deadly poison. Don't forget my stick with the nail in it. <laughs> that nail is pretty rusty. Quite so. But uh, if you will look at that ivory elephant on the mantel, <laughs> when a button is pressed, 
The eyes emit powerful laser beams. <laughs> powerful enough to cut you in two. Yes, yes, yes. Now you look into this wonton soup you gave me. Those are no longer wontons. They are Krepler. <laughs> Aha, I switched them earlier. The Krepler are made of a highly explosive material. Just the slightest stall and this whole place will blow up like a blimp. Very clever, Mr. Brand. But before you are stirring your Krepler, I must tell you about this chair you sit in. You see, Mr. Brown, my knee controls a river that will release two daggers in the back of that chair. But if I were to pitch forward too suddenly, Dr. New, the mezuzah hanging on my neck. <laughs> I repeat, the mezuzah hanging on my neck would be jarred enough to release a noxious liquid that will chap your lips. <laughs> You win, Mr. Brown. <laughs> what do you want of me? What do you know about a paper that lists the ten highest B'nai Brit pledges? <laughs> B'nai Brit? Pledges? Could it be? Mr. Brown, does the phrase red and the brew is a brown mean anything to you? Not the way you say it, no. <laughs> yes, yes. But I know what you mean. That's the password of Tanta. How could you know it? Unbelievable. <laughs> it seems we are both working for Tante. <laughs> you must be my ransom. <laughs> you mean to tell me you're with Tanta? Sure. You don't look it. <laughs> well, I'm with the Far East chapter. <laughs> I'm half Jewish, half Japanese. My real name is Irving Yamamoto. <laughs> I am trying to get those prejudices back because half of them are promised to the Formosa division of the UJA. Well, it seems. It seems, my friend, we're both after the very same gefilte fish. <coughs> Doctor, what have you learned? Everything points to one man. Gold Fraker. <laughs> Gold flaker? No. Not 14 carat gold flaker, the matzo king. <laughs> Precisely. But gold flaker is the most powerful matzo magnet in the whole kosher cracker industry. <laughs> How does he figure in all of this? Oh, he is a top man of treff. He has perfected the method by which the pledge names are to be distributed to the other agents of treff. A method that would have gone undetected if it were not for us. And tell me, what is this method? He has baked the list into the middle of a matzo. <laughs> I see, yes. And that single matzo, what if we don't find it? Oh, then there will never be another bar mitzvah and formosa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gold Flaker Matzah commercial. Take one. I mean, take one. <laughs> Gold Flaker. He's the one who makes matzo with the flakes of gold. Ten million souls. If you eat matzo plain or fried, try the gold inside and we're sure you will learn before next Passover that you simply can't pass over Gold Flaker So fill up your mouth and fill up your teeth with gold Fill them up with gold Fill them up with gold All Right, Gold Flaker, you're all true. We know all about you and your crazy scheme. We were expecting you, <laughs> Mr. Blunt. Don't move. As you see, that that's my man, Zlob, over there. <laughs> he is koshering the matzes. Well, 
His yamoki skullcap has a sharp stainless steel rim. So what? Uh, if you move, Mr. Blunt, he will throw that skullcap at you. And whether you use... Tutu. Or... Tutu. Or... <laughs> or any other blade, <laughs> you will find that Zlob's yamoki cuts them all. You fiend! Give me that list! I must get Daddy's name! Zlob! Ah! Ugh! Killed by a flying yamaka. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for you, we have even better plans, Mr. Blunt. We are going to strap you into our conveyor belt and watch you plopping into the matzo belt. <laughs> Pretty soon, Mr. Blunt, it will be better up. <laughs> Don't be silly, Gold Flaker. Ever since I've been here, the transistor radio on the heel for my shoe has been sending out Morse code signals to my brother agents in Israel. <laughs> My help should already be on the way. But uh, you forget, Mr. Blunt. Today is Saturday. <laughs> and Israel is closed. <laughs> now you will go into the better. But after we have learned all that you know. Save your time. Nothing can make me talk. Oh, no. But you have not as yet met Miss Sissy a lot. <laughs> she can make anyone do anything. Sissy a lot, eh? Well, she won't get anywhere with me. <laughs> From the moment you first see her, Mr. Blunt, you will have but one thought in your mind. And... What will that be? You'll have to make sissy. <laughs> All right, Zlob. Bring him in here. Mr. Blunt, this is sissy a lot. Wowie wow. <laughs> Uh, we will leave you two alone for a while. Well, sissy, you certainly lovely. The loveliest lassie what I've ever seen. <laughs> and I know what you want. Likewise, Mr. Blonde. Very well, then, let's make a deal. We'll play any game you name. If I win, I get everything. If you win, you get everything. I hate to brag, but believe me, either way, you get everything. Very well, James. We'll play Spin the Bottle. Spin the Bottle? Yes, and it's only fair to warn you, I'm the best Spin the Bottle player in the world. But there's only you and me in the whole room. I'll take my chances if you will. All right, spin it. The doorknob! The bottle pointed to the doorknob! You have to kiss the doorknob. <laughs> okay, okay. Now it's your turn. Ha <laughs> ha, the window. Ha, ah, the stove. Hmm, the chair. The table. The rug. The piano. You. You. Anything for you. Oh, sissy, sissy. <laughs> I really love you, sissy. Then it's true, isn't it? Yes, it's true. Blondes do have more fun. <laughs> now, you must escape and take me with you. But my mission, I've got to find that matzah containing the list. I know where it is, James. It was sent to the White House in Washington, along with a whole gross of innocent matzahs. The president is throwing a barbecue and kosher cookout on the White House lawn for Ambassador Goldberg. But how could Goldflake make such a stupid mistake? What a dummy. Sending that list to the president of all people. Goldflaker didn't send it. I did. Red and blue is brown, James. But how? 
How do you know? I'm with International Police eliminating nasty evil men altogether. That's I-P-E-N-E-M-A. You mean? Yes, James. I'm the girl from Ipanema. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, <clears throat> I'm uh, Stan Greeson from uh, United Press. Uh, yes, sir, your question. <laughs> uh, is it true uh, that you've taken a special personal interest in the Women's Army Corps? Yes. I've even been sort of hoping that they might someday be known as Johnson's Wax. <laughs> uh, would, would the uh, questions continue, please? Mr. President, uh, I'm Murph the Sir from the Miami Herald. <laughs> uh, what's on your mind, son? Sir, uh, is it true that you're thinking of renaming the White House? Well, we have been giving some serious thought to calling it by a much folksier name than White House. We've sort of been wanting to call it simply Birdland. <laughs> uh, continue, please. Cheesecake uh, Restaurant Associates newsletter. Uh, sir, is it true that you are sponsoring a discotheque for the aged? <laughs> yes. In keeping with our policy of providing greater opportunities for our senior citizens, we are opening a lovely little dancing place called the Medicare A Go Go. <laughs> Sir, I'm uh, Sheldon Brodsky, uh, unemployment bulletin. Uh, sir, why was Lieutenant James Carey relieved of his duties as one of our astronauts? Because of the mental requirements. But, Mr. President, now Carey had the highest IQ of them all. That's the point, son. You know, nobody likes a smart astronaut. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm James Blonde. Secret Agent 00695, marked down from seven. <laughs> I'm the man from Tanta. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Blonde? Uh, sir, what happened to that case of matzo sent here from the Gold Flaker Bakers? <laughs> uh, baker? Don't say that word, Baker, around here. <laughs> Mr. President, among those matches was one that contained the list of the ten highest pledges to the B'nai B'rith Drive. Our enemies in Traif have done everything to get that list. We must recover that before it's too late. Well, since we had to discontinue our plans for the kosher cookout, what with Mr. Goldberg being awfully busy these days, why, we decided to serve those matzahs as hors d'oeuvre crackers right here at this press conference. You mean we're eating those matzahs right now? <laughs> yes. And, uh, wait a minute. Stick out your tongue, Mr. Blonde. Ah, <laughs> uh, how curious. Your tongue has I pledge $10,000 written on it. <laughs> Why, then the matzah I'm eating must be the one that has the list. You've done it, Mr. Blonde. You've helped keep the world safe from trafe. <laughs> well, sissy, here we are. We'll be touching down in London in about half an hour. Oh, James, is it really over all of it? Yes, sissy, all of it. I've got the list back and all of the gang are in custody, except for Goldflaker. When our men converged on the Goldflaker factory, why, Goldflaker stumbled over his man's love steel rimmed yarmulke, <laughs> and they both fell into the matzo batter. <laughs> oh, James, at last we can relax and play spin the bottle all we want. I know M is going to really like you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, coffee, tea, or milk? <laughs> tea, please. 
oolong with just a dash jasmine in it. Why? Why no oolong with a dash jasmine? Save it exactly 182 degrees. Is that uh, Fahrenheit or centigrade? That's Fahrenheit. All righty. It must be in Pyrex glasses, preheated to 200 degrees, <laughs> and kept at that temperature for precisely 10 minutes before the tea is poured in. No sugar, a sliced lemon exactly two centimeters thick and twisted once. Oh, James, you know how to live. <laughs> and, uh, sir, will you be taking a piece of matzo with your tea in a glass? Matzo? Yes, sir, you are flying LL Airlines, you know. Well, no, no matzo, thank you. You never can tell what you'll find inside of one. <laughs> or who. <laughs>